Good day, folks. Today, we're taking a look at not just one, and not just two, but four old Sony digital cameras. So I'm making this video today because I'm currently in the process of moving, and I'm not obviously going to show the house and or my room for that matter because they are all total messes as to be expected when you're moving. So I picked a little confined space here at home to which I could hopefully take a look at these cameras with you all today. So I have three digital Mavicas, and I have one older Cybershot Pro, for which we'll probably take a look at first to get out of the way because I don't have the proper storage medium for which I can actually make proper demonstrations of this camera with. But the Mavicas, I definitely will try to do my best to, you know, at least show on a uh, little video here uh, within this video, of course. So here is the Sony Cybershot Pro, and I believe the only reason why I picked up this camera in particular is because it was probably on sale at a Goodwill, so I probably got it like 50% off or something of that nature. So let's just say it was a $10 camera, and even still, I mean, this thing was definitely a very nice camera for the time period. I believe this was made in 2000 or something. Uh, there's a date code on the bottom of these, but... Somebody can probably look up the model, which is the DSC-D770. So you could probably figure out when this thing was made. I would probably venture to guess, I think it was 2000 that this camera was made. It could have been 1999. It was in that range. I know that for a fact. I just, I can't remember it off the top of my head. And please don't bash on me in the comment section. I'm currently in the process of moving. I ain't got the time to deal with trying to look up information because we're supposed to be pretty much out of this house by the end of the month. And so really I should even be making this video because I should be focusing on moving, but I digress. Today you get a special video of sorts. So taking a look at this camera a little bit farther, it has a manual zoom here with this big ring and it's got a five times optical zoom. It's also got a manual focus ring here and there's also a few different toggle switches on the uh, left-hand side of the camera for which you can select your autofocus or manual focus because then this ring will do the adjustments for itself. And you also have a few different settings toggles on this wheel here for flash, white balance, uh, quality, size, ISO, auto exposure, those sorts of things. There you can see the model number DSC D770. And I'm believing underneath this flap is like the video out, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, so that's where the video out jack is. It just uses your standard Sony, uh, like the jack that goes in and then it gives you composite video out. Sorry to have to turn on the light. It's a little bit hard to see with this lighting I'm in. But this is the rear of the camera, and this is where all the goodies happen. So obviously we have a nice LCD display here for which you can review your photos on. I believe in normal operation to save power, this is not normally on, but I believe you can turn it on as a live viewfinder if you so wish. There is a toggle switch for turning on the camera and going into playback mode, and there's a little safety toggle over here that's green. Then you have a little up and down pad. You have a menu button, an execute button, an exit button. This is most likely to browse through the on-screen menus. Then you have a couple of different things up here like your LCD toggle switch and some other uh, options that you can turn on and you have a little viewfinder here with an adjustment thing this is just a pass-through viewfinder let me turn off the flashlight real quick so as you can see it's basically just a pass-through lens it's not actually connected to the camera or maybe it is connected to the camera but it's just a pass-through to the lens it's not actually like an lcd screen or a little crt inside of there that's acting as a viewfinder it's just a pure like a viewfinder through to the lens or something of that nature on the top, you have a mount. I don't know what kind of mount this is or what kind of devices are able to be attached to this mount. We have a little status LCD containing or what would contain a bunch of different uh, settings for the camera at a glance, especially if you didn't have the LCD on like most film cameras. And then there's this little uh, jog wheel here for probably switching through different settings or making manual adjustments, probably using this wheel over here on the side. Then you have exposure, spot mapping, and then your shutter button is right here. And then what's really kind of unique about this camera, and also the reason why I can't quite demonstrate it in this video, is because this has a unusual storage medium. Now, unlike the uh, digital Mavicas of the day, this does not use floppy disks, and for that matter, doesn't use Sony's memory stick. Uh, this uses PCM-CIA, so 
if you had a PCMCIA style of flash memory device, it would go into this slot here. So unfortunately, I can only really power on the camera and like give you a look around a little bit, but I can't actually take any photos and get them transferred. I don't have that kind of ability, so that's rather unfortunate. But I am going to grab an Info Lithium L series battery, and that way we can actually try powering on this camera. All right, so let's see if we can try this camera out real quick. Switch it to cam mode. See if anything comes out of it. I don't remember how this thing entirely works. But uh, at the moment, I'm not seeing anything, but no, I don't really see anything on the uh, viewfinder either. Interesting. I had to try that battery in another one of these cameras and it didn't turn on, so I think that battery was dead. So let me try another one here. There we go. Yeah, there's some activity. So as you can see, there is the little status display that would show all the different settings of the camera in real time, like your f-stop. I believe that is the um, ISO, don't quote me on that because it's pretty low right now, but I could be wrong. Um, I'm not too familiar with this camera or higher end cameras in general. So you'll have to forgive me on that. We do get a little battery display, flash status, and lots of different other, uh, indicators. So I'm going to switch it back to autofocus and there is a little thing that tells you MF or AF. And I believe there'll be some more indicators on the viewfinder as you can see right down there you can see what i'm talking about like the f-stop as well as the iso i believe don't quote me on that but let's see um let's see how the autofocus is going to work here let me see if i can get you guys in view of the viewfinder here so you can see how it would kind of work but i can't take anything because there's no card in this camera. As you can see, it's flashing their card. Well, let's see if we can turn on the LCD here. Yeah, as you can see, there is your LCD. This is an active matrix color LCD. So that probably explains why it's in a camera like this. Although the LCD itself is an extremely low resolution, but that's how they were able to get active matrix color in this camera. And of course, it's only really useful as a viewfinder and something to toggle through the different menu options. It doesn't have very good uh, viewing angles as to be expected, and it's not very bright, but we can go ahead and take a look at some of the different settings here. So you can see PC card in it, that would format your PC card, user file save, new folder. So you could definitely tell that this was a higher end camera as it allowed you to basically put all your photos into folders and I believe this camera, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure what the resolution of the sensor is. I would assume that it's not any more than one megapixel because let's just face it, uh, this camera is again from like 99 or 2000. So by that point, only really the highest end of Mavic has had like 1.6 megapixels and that was interpolated at that. So I can't imagine that this thing would have a really fancy sort of thing. Well, let's see. Power save, review time, self-timer, histogram, frame. You can turn on the beeps. But I'm wondering if there is an option for changing, like, the frame size. Not sure. Um, I guess you can customize the user interface there, something of that nature. Nah. So, overall, very sophisticated menu system, it looks like. You can also turn off the on-screen indicators. There's the easy focus mode. And then you can turn the LCD off. Review just basically goes in and you can look at your photos if you had any, if I'm not mistaken. So that's also going to be for the uh, playback, which again, can't do anything because there's no card in here. And as you can see by default, it goes back to just using the viewfinder to save power. So overall, a very sweet camera from the day. It's just you know, I unfortunately don't have any means of actually saving any photos from this camera because I don't have a PC card storage device to which I can save photos to because otherwise I totally would. But that's it for this camera. So let's move on to one of the Mavicas. So I actually don't know the model of this particular camera. I think it's on the front. Yeah, 
MVC FD91. And I believe this is a 1999 model Mavica. And this one has a 1024 by 768 resolution sensor, as you can see based on the top of that flash there. This camera has optical image stabilization, hence this big bulge out of the front. And it's got a few of the different controls on the front of it as well, including this focus ring, which is what this is for. And uh, you can see some of the lens specs there. It is quite dirty, but you know, you can easily clean the lens. I believe this has a 14 times optical zoom on it, which is pretty impressive for something of this nature. It definitely was not a cheap camera back in the day, I'll tell you that much. It's also got video recording and there is a mono microphone there to assist in that. You can see some of the toggles here on the side for your zoom, auto and manual focus, and you can also turn on the optical image stabilization or the steady shot. There is also a switch to which you can open up the flash. That is a manual toggle. So this is how the camera knows if you want to use the flash or if you don't want to use the flash. So it's pretty ingenious in that nature. Right there, you can see a couple more controls for white balance, and your program, and there's a couple of different toggles to which you can uh, use in the on-screen display. Once again, I gotta turn on the flash because it's a little bit dark, but as you can see, there is a viewfinder. This one is just an LCD or CRT style of viewfinder. It's nothing fancy because there's no pass-through to the lens. It's just a reflection of the user interface here. And you can, I believe, turn off the LCD again to save power. You also have a spot meter there. And on these Mavicas, or at least some of them, they have this uh, little slot here to which you can insert a CR2032 coin cell battery to run the real-time clock and obviously keep the settings of the camera. You also have this flip-up LCD, and it's not like the complete crazy LCD for which was on like Sony's micro MV camcorders that later came after these but this one has like one of those where you can take like a selfie of yourself if you so desired to. And on the left hand side, it's got brightness and volume controls. So that's pretty nifty. And I believe actually the speakers right there for uh, if you're watching your small movie clips. Down here, you can see you have a toggle switch for play, which is playback. Still, which is your photo taking mode. And movie, which is your video taking mode. You also have a little... Uh, stick here for which you can go through the menus. You have a little access light for your floppy drive. This has the 2x speed floppy drive in it. There's a display button so you can change the on-screen displays. Flash for on and off flash, although again, I believe that only works if you have the flash up. Um, I don't remember if it actually automatically pops up the flash. I don't believe it does, but don't quote me on that. I think I might be wrong on that, but that'll also allow you to turn on like a manual like off flash toggle even if it's popped up or something of that nature there you can see the disc eject mechanism for the floppy drive so that's how that is so very cool there you can see the 2x speed floppy drive here on the side it's just your standard 1.44 megabyte three and a half inch compatible floppy disk drive stuck in a camera and the heads read at two times the speed of a standard floppy drive which allows you to take photos and for that matter video more quickly and write it to the disc so you can actually take more shots more frequently and i believe under here this would be a pass through for an ac adapter because in the case of this if this particular camera there's no charger hole instead what sony did when they uh, sold you the camera they gave you a charger block that would manually connect the battery to the charger itself, but you get a little adapter that you could plug into the camera and the cord would come out of this pass-through to which you could power the camera without a battery while your battery, I believe, was charging. It was either one or the other, maybe both. I can't recall entirely what those chargers allowed you to do, but that's what this is for, is a pass-through for an AC adapter. And here's a couple more of the brags. You can see MPEG Movie, which that was actually quite a selling point for these Mavicas. In particular, uh, I believe this feature was also supported on my MVC FD83, as well as my MVC FD90. And basically it allowed you to record MPEG-1 video to a floppy disk up to, uh, I believe, 15 seconds of 320 by 240 video at 15 frames per second. Oh, and I believe there's also a lower resolution of 176 by 144. Uh, at least that's the resolutions that are on the MVC FD90 and MVC FD83. I don't know if that's the case on this one, 
But uh, yeah, there's voice memo, which of course is just voice recording onto the floppy disk. You can do disk copying and you can also make files locked and or compressed to fit into an email attachment. So if you wanted to send photos to family members or whatever the case might be from back in the day. Of course, this was really easy to do with this camera because it's only a resolution of 1024 by 768. But I believe that would also allow photos to be taken in the lower resolution of 640 by 480, which would make them easier to send in an email. Because back in the day, uh, the standard screen resolution was likely either... 800 by 600 or 1024 by 768 so it was perfectly fine to lower the resolution to 640 by 480 to send over email because otherwise it would take absolutely forever to send on a dial-up connection and that was crucial back in the day to compress things down because that was the typical connection was a 56k modem with some kind of dial-up service now, with all the Mavicas, I will revisit this video later when I'm back up at my dorm and have access to all my floppy disks because right now I don't have access to floppy disks, but I will definitely revisit these cameras at a later point in this video to which we will actually go and take photos with them and actually show them on the video. So hopefully you realize that's the reason why this video is so exasperately long, but anyways... So turning on the FD91, you can see it says no disk there, but that's just because of the fact that, again, I don't have a disk in the drive. This actually uses a sort of older interface, even though this was made in 1999. I believe this was early 99 when this camera was actually made. I think the date code on the bottom of the camera said 9B, which means the second quarter of 1999. So this actually uses the slightly older style of Mavica user interface. So there's the LCD, as you can see, and we can also switch it over to the viewfinder, which I don't know if that's coming in. I can't quite tell, but the viewfinder, I'm not sure. Whoops, I'm not even pointing the camera properly. I don't know if that's still functional or not, but at least the LCD still works great. And it's backlit, of course, which is pretty nice. Unlike the later Mavicas, again, like the, I believe the FD83 here, as well as the FD90, this one does not have one of those uh, see-through LCD backlight systems where you could turn the backlight off and let the natural light coming in light the LCD up and you'd save a crazy amount of battery life. This camera does not have that function. But anyways, let's go ahead and cruise through the menu real quick. So you can see there's a couple of different options in here. So you can do normal, which is just taking a normal JPEG. Email, again, is the style for which it's best for email of the late 90s, early 2000s. So it records, I believe, at 640 by 480 with a small file size. Oh, that's right. I remember now. Voice allows you to put a little audio sample next to a photo in the case of the voice. And you could actually, like, have a little snippet of audio to go along with your picture. And then bitmap saves it in a bitmap format instead of jpeg and there's quality so you got standard or fine fine just ups the bitrate of the photo and makes it take up more space on the disc but it's almost like a field and frame style of toggle so standard would take like half the lines of the sensor or something like that or fine like it increases the quality or something of that nature i'm actually going to set to fine when we actually take a look at doing stuff with this camera but you can see the two resolutions 1024 by 768 or 640 by 480 you also have a flash level so low normal or high and it does make a difference and then you can see normal or series of the file numbers i believe normal just bases it off of what's already on the disc and i believe series continually keeps counting up the numbers until you switch it back to normal or something of that nature. I believe that's what that is. Then disk tool is just simply where you can make copies of disks. So you can write on the camera, take one disk, copy its contents to another disk, or you could format a floppy disk, which is pretty nice. It just formats it as FAT16. And of course you can turn on the beeps and set the clock. So overall a very simple but functional user interface. And again, I can't demonstrate the photo taking because I don't have a disc in the drive, but we can test out the zoom real quick. Again, the zoom toggle is here on the lens. 
And you can actually zoom in quite a ways and the autofocus is very quick on this camera. There is no digital zoom. It does get a little noisy and that's actually reflected on the LCD, not just because of its lower resolution. But it basically uses a sensor from a camcorder of the time period. And the image stabilization is really good. Even to this day, it's still very, very steady and actually very impressive. So this would be a great camera if you're doing sports photography, for example, or if you're in high motion like kids or animals, that sort of thing. This would be great for that sort of application because it's just a very good optical image stabilization system. But for now, that's all I can do with the FD91. So let's move on to the FD83. So here's the digital Mavica MVC FD83 from actually in this case 2000, about the first quarter of 2000, but I believe this was a 1999 model, but don't quote me on that. It was probably manufactured in 2000, but it was actually made in 99 for that matter, the model itself. Don't quote me on that. Somebody will probably correct me in the comments. Again, forgive me. I'm not doing too much research on this because I'm currently so busy that it's almost not even worth making this video. So you'll have to bear with me on that. But anyways, this one introduced the 4X floppy drive feature alongside some other ones. So this actually has the heads of the floppy drive moving at four times the speed of a normal floppy drive, which means that this thing can actually record photos to disk really quickly. And this also helps with the higher resolution of the sensor. In this case, this camera, I believe, is one megapixel. Yes, a whole flip flop and one megapixel. But again, somebody's probably going to correct me. So I apologize. I will come back if actually people are interested in me making more in-depth videos of each of these cameras. Well, except for the Cybershot individually. And then I'll be more accurate with research and actually demonstrating the camera and its features and all that sort of stuff. So let me know if that's something you all would like me to do. And I'll throw it on the list of things I can consider actually doing. But as you can see, interpolated megapixel images. That's where I got the thing of it being a one megapixel camera. This also has the MPEG-1 movie function, which again is MPEG-1 video at up to 320 by 240 resolution at 15 frames per second. So not too shabby. So overall, this was a fairly decent camera for its day. It's got a lot of features going for it, except for, of course, the onboard charging, which again, this one does not have, but it does have the mono audio and composite video out. And there's also a auto and manual focus switch there for which you'd use this ring to control. Up here on top is where the microphone is, as well as your shutter button, the two-stage shutter button. And on the back is where all the magic happens. So let me turn my light on. So here is the back of the camera. And the first thing you'll see is this LCD backlight switch. This I mentioned earlier was that switch where you could turn it off and on. And this up here is a window for which the backlight is located. But you can turn off the backlight and the natural sunlight will actually shine through and light up the LCD itself. Which means you can save at least an hour of battery life by doing that, which is very impressive. Especially considering you're still having to power a floppy drive, as well as a image sensor and, the, well, the LCD, of course. So that was actually a really brilliant idea, and I wish that more devices could actually have that kind of functionality to turn off the backlight. But I know it's kind of a niche thing these days, but back in the day, it actually made a heck of a lot of sense to do something like that. So Sony was actually on top of it with that feature. But if you had the LCD on or the backlight on, because obviously there's no viewfinder in this camera, and same thing goes for that FD90 over there, there's no viewfinder, you can change the brightness of the backlight. You can also change the volume of the speaker because the speaker's right here. This does not have a uh, tilting swiveling LCD on it. This also has a flash button here because the flash is fixed to the front of the camera. You also have picture effects. You also have your program functions and a display button for the on-screen display. You also have your toggle switch for playback mode, uh, still frame mode, and movie mode. And just like the FD91, you have a little dial here for which you can go through the on-screen menu, which is the newer style Mavica menu in this camera's case. You also have your power switch and your floppy drive uh, little toggle thing here. This is a little safety switch to which it prevents something from accidentally yanking the disc out because, of course, the floppy drive is on the right-hand side of the camera. 
and there's also a zoom control up here. This one is not nearly as nice. It only has a three times optical zoom, but it also introduces digital zoom. So you can get up to six times zoom through the digital zoom. But if you turn off the digital zoom, which you can do, it'll only give you access to three times optical zoom, which most cameras of the time had, which is fine. And I apologize, the sun kind of moved behind a cloud, so it really made the lighting a bit difficult, so I apologize about that. But the only other thing that's worth mentioning is the floppy drive on the side. Again, this is the 4X speed floppy drive, which allows the head to move four times faster than a standard floppy drive. So let's go ahead and power this camera on. It's probably going to ask for the date and time, as you can tell there. So it has the older sound effect chime and the newer style menu. So this is kind of a hybrid, if you will. We'll just leave whatever the defaults are. But you can see the menu here is a little bit more updated and a little more feature rich. And you can tell this camera will actually get more battery life than the MVC FD91. And then we can also turn off the backlight here, as you can see. The LCD is still active. It's just, it's not lit up by the uh, backlight itself. And if I get up and let's say go to the sliding glass window over here and let some sunshine shine into the backlight a little bit, you can see a little bit, but the camera now reports 430 minutes of estimated runtime on this battery. Then if I bring it back over here, turn on the backlight, you can see it immediately drops down to 346 minutes. So it saved you a crazy amount of battery life just by turning off the backlight. So still a very impressive feature for at least the time period. So let's take a brief look inside the menu system here. You can see a setup option. So this just gives you options for your video out, which is NTSC or PAL. You have a couple of different language options being that this is a Sony product that had a Japanese language support. There's your clock settings and you can turn on the sound effects from that. There's also camera settings. So you can turn on or off the digital zoom which I'll actually turn on for the sake of demonstration. You can obviously adjust white balance settings for indoor, outdoor, or hold. Change your flash level as well as your exposure manually. And here you have a file option. So again, you, can't re you got normal email and voice, very similar to the FD91. You just don't get the bitmap option, uh, which sometimes bitmaps are actually, uh, I guess if you wanted to work with them in MS Paint or something. But email's the same way, you know, 640 by 480 resolution, a locked file, like whatever. So that way it'd be easier to send over email. And voice is once again a thing where it'll let you attach a few seconds of audio to a photo. Quality, same thing like the FD91. It's just standard or fine. There's your image size, which this one gives you the one megapixel resolution of 1216 by 912. And I believe, I'm not sure, I think it's interpolated if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, interpolated. So I believe this is just a standard sensor. It's just that it processes up to one megapixel images. And otherwise, it's basically the exact same functions. You also have a macro mode, which is pretty cool to see there. Uh, you also have a self timer, which is nice to see as well. And this one has more personality to its menu a little bit. Where when you're inside of the playback mode, um, you have a few different options in here too. This toggles between photos on the floppy disk. Index just makes little bite-sized previews on the screen to which you can thumb through. Delete self-explanatory. And then the file and setup menus are the exact same basically, except in file you have a couple different things. You can do a slideshow, which just runs through the floppy drive and displays all the photos. Copy allows you to copy a photo between one disk and another. You can print mark a photo to which you, when you put the uh, stuff through your computer, it'll allow you to print it out easily enough because it'll be marked as such. Sorry about the poor camera work again. And then you can also protect a file from being deleted on the disk. And then same thing here again, you know, obviously um, there's no change in the setup menu, but we'll go to the uh, video function here, the movie function. There we go. This switch is a little sticky. So you can record up to 15 seconds of video. And the reason why it's set that way is because, again, we're working with floppy disks. And a 15-second long MPEG-1 video is going to take up 1.44 megabytes of a disk. So 
basically the entire disc is held up if you use the maximum video size and resolution. I believe if you use the one, oh, it was 160 by 112. That was the, uh, that was the other resolution was 160 by 112. I apologize about that. But if you use this, I believe that allowed you to cut down on the file size usage and you could probably fit two of those kinds of videos, but they're very, very low resolution. But I guess that's also useful if you were using this with a non MMX computer that couldn't play back video, but don't quote me on that. And then otherwise same thing is here. So maybe we might play around with that. I've got plenty of floppy disks that we could use to uh, do all sorts of stuff with. But anyways, so that is the MVC FD83 and its menu system. Now the FD90 has a very similar-ish style of menu to which it's a little bit different looking, but it's basically the same thing. So I'm not going to go too in-depth with the FD90, but I'll at least show off the hardware of that particular camera too. Whoops. So let's go ahead and take a look at the FD90. And this was my very first Mavica that I ever bought at a thrift store. This is the MVC FD90 from 2000, which actually has the ability to record to a memory stick if you had a special adapter, which is very cool. And the camera will actually recognize that and you can take many more photos than a standard floppy disk would allow. And I believe you can also record multiple different uh, MPEG-1 videos onto a memory stick. And I believe this will work with up to, I want to say, a 128 megabyte memory stick. I have a 256 meg memory stick, which has a little switch on it that will let you go back and forth between two separate memory stick chips, which is very cool. And I believe those would actually work in this adapter, but I don't actually have like the floppy disk adapter itself. And also I believe this would require a special driver in Windows in order to be able to access those files. But if anybody has a standard card reader, which most of us do these days, it would actually have the old style memory stick slot and you don't have to worry about that because it's just a standard memory stick. But if you had the floppy drive or the floppy disk thing only with the memory stick, then yes, you would have to install a special driver in order to be able to access that sort of stuff. But I digress. And you also have the stamina specs here. I also have that NP-F550 battery. And there you can see the flash. That it's a little record indicator to let you know when a photo is taken. That's an infrared sensor, I believe, for helping with autofocus. There you can see the zoom toggle, which the paint's clearly been worn off of that. And then your two-stage shutter button. Now this camera has quite a bit more specs going for it. This one has an eight times optical zoom and a 16 times digital zoom. And there's your switch for auto or manual focus, again, controlled by this ring around the lens. Now this camera actually has something really nice going for it and that it has a built-in DC in charging port. And this is used for some of the handy cams of the time that had one of these little charger holes. This one's actually got one of those, which is fantastic. So I technically have a camera that can charge as well as a standalone charger for Info Lithium L series batteries, which is brilliant. There you can see the video out. And I believe this little port here with the lightning symbol next to it, I believe is for powered accessories. Like, a, I'm not sure what it would exactly go in there. Maybe like a stronger flash or microphone or heck, I don't know what would exactly go in there. Somebody would probably enlighten me in the comments section about how much of a oof I am for not looking that up. And here's the back of the FD90. As you can see, it's a lot more simplified and a little bit cleaner looking on the back. You also have a little area for which you can hold the camera more easily. And you also have quicker access to the disc eject mechanism. Oh, I actually have a floppy disc in this camera. Well, shucks. All right, well then, uh, screw that. I guess I'll be using this disc for the remainder of the video. Very cool. So, uh, hmm. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm not, I'm not going to record any photos to which I can't you know, obviously get photos off the other three cameras. I'll make it more fair and I'll wait until I actually have access to all my floppy disks. And then I'll show you all the photos for which I take with this camera then and there. But at least it's cool to see that I do have one in there, at least temporarily. So here you can see once again, an LCD uh, backlight switch. You have a volume control up here. This one, the LCD brightness is controlled through the software of the camera. There's no uh, backlight brightness button on the camera itself. There you can see the familiar play still in movies switch there. You can see flash. The macro mode is also moved to a button on the camera itself, not in the software. But otherwise, all the other toggles are the same. And then this one also has the four speed floppy drive. So that's pretty cool. So without further ado, I guess we'll take the lens cap off the front and power it on.
you could probably tell the startup sound was very similar, but not in, it's not exactly the same. This one has more of a PCM sample style of startup sound. So let me turn my flash off real quick. So here we go into the firmware of the camera. As you can see, the interface is greatly simplified, but it's otherwise the exact same. Also, the effects are moved into here. So you can actually put a date and time stamp on a photo. I believe this was on the other cameras too. It's just, I didn't see the toggle, but here you can, you can use your picture effects here inside the camera. They're not on a standalone button like before. But as you can see, you got the same thing. This one actually has a text function on it and it has the same voice and email functions as before. Now this camera gives you multiple different resolution options, which is brilliant. So you get the same 640 by 480 and 1024 by 768 toggles as the two other cameras that I showed before. This 1280 with the three by two next to it actually takes a photo in three by two aspect ratio, which is kind of cool. And I believe that 1280 by 960 is like a one point something megapixel photo. I'm not sure if that's the actual resolution of the sensor. I'm not too sure. Maybe it's that 1280 thing down there. And then of course, 1472 by 1104 is the 1 1.6 megapixel interpolated image resolution. So that's pretty cool. And this can take quite a sharp photo, but again, it's interpolated, so it's not the native resolution of the sensor. But still, this camera does a good job at processing, so you, it's really hard to tell, especially in good lighting. But there you got the same uh, disk copy and format options as before. And you got the option for digital zoom. Uh, this one actually has a sharpness toggle, which is really cool. I believe it lets you go up to plus two and minus two of sharpness on the image. There's your white balance toggles like before, flash level, exposure. And then this one, as you remember me telling you, the LCD brightness is controlled via the software of the camera. Then you can otherwise have access to all these other things. I believe this one only, again, has access to English and Japanese, but otherwise virtually identical in settings. Both the MVC FD83 and the FD90 have this little indicator on the LCD to tell you how full your disc is approximately. And there's a number next to it to show how many photos are on the disc. Now, I believe when you have the maximum image size selected, you're only allowed, I think, either five or six photos on a disc at a time before you have to eject the disc and put in another one. And again, the movie thing, you can only have one 320 by 240 video at up to 15 seconds that just fills up the entire floppy disk so on and so forth but i will actually do one thing and i will actually let you guys hear the speed of the 4x floppy drive in both the mvc fd83 and fd90 and then i'll let you hear the 2x floppy disk speeds or the floppy drive from the fd91 so what i'll do is i'll just take some junk photo here and this is just so you can hear the floppy drive So you can hear that head just go like that's the actual read write head going on the disc. So it's a very high speed floppy drive. So this camera does not screw around with trying to get photos written to the disc and to get you able to take your next photo. It's nowhere near the speed of a digital camera, but it's still pretty quick for old Mavica like this. And here's the FD83. This has an older drive in it, but it's still 4X. So you can definitely hear the motor going up to the four times speed. As you can probably tell from this camera's uh, floppy drive sound. And then the FD91. You can definitely tell it's definitely half the speed of the four times since this is only a two times speed drive. It only went versus the other two, which went dut, 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 dut. So this definitely has the slower floppy drive, although it's still a very quick camera to record photos because it only takes them at 1024 by 768 resolution, not one megapixel or 1.6 megapixels. So it's actually still very quick to write a photo to a floppy disk. So at least for this part of the video, that wraps it up for all of these cameras. Now I'm going to phase this one out of the video because again, I can't use it. So we're only gonna really be focusing on these three Mavicas 
for the rest of this video, to which I'll probably take some sample photos just for the sake of fun, because it's always fun to use these old cameras just to see what kind of photos they can take. I actually, like I said, I genuinely remember this thing taking some really good photos for what it is. In fact, the quality can actually still hold up to modern day cameras. It's just obviously the low resolution really holds it back. But it could be fun to take photos with this old FD91 to get that vintage digital camera feel, which is always something I enjoy with these old cameras. But uh, anyways, for now, I'll see you all later. But thanks to the magic of video editing, you won't have to wait that long until the next segment of the video.